Good morning guys, I'm finally back from Berlin having all of those business meetings left me with more business stuff I couldn't take care really of answering emails so that's the first part of this morning. Let's start today's video with a little story I have here two of these bags of snacks and the story behind it is yesterday evening when I arrived at the main train station Vanessa called me, she asked me if I could get her some snacks. I didn't really have the time to go into the main train station and buy them in a store. So I went to one of those vending machines that have these spinning metal things. You put in money, press a number, it starts turning and it falls down. I put in a euro, press my number and this bag gets stuck. Like at the very tip, I tried of course shaking the machine but it's... It's a well-made German stainless steel vending machine, so there's no way it's shaking. So then, of course, I was thinking what to do. I had two options. I either put in more money, get something else and hope that it falls down, put in more money and press again the same number to get the same thing and hope that at least the first one falls down and maybe even have the chance that the second one will also fall down. For me, there was no other real option than just putting in another euro, pressing again the same number and hoping to get at least one of those two bags or maybe even both. And this situation and this entire story reminds me of things that happen a lot in life, especially with being a full-time music producer. A lot of times you have to go an extra step, you have to invest even more, although you failed. You have to make the next track, although your previous one didn't get released. It's also a good example for being risk averse. If you're a person that then just chooses not to put in the next euro or just to pick something else or just to leave and think, okay, I lost the one euro, that's it, then you're definitely not made for being a music producer, for being self-employed. You're more a person that kind of needs a normal job and a normal income because what I'm doing and what a lot of other musicians are doing is, is something that is really tough and you can only do when you really love it. So let me know, what would you do in this vending machine situation? Would you invest the next year or would you just go? Would you just kick it until it falls down? But yeah, as I said, it was really like a massive thing and cameras everywhere, so not really an option. In this case, it worked. I got both of them and now, although it's really early in the morning, I think I've deserved one of these. These are peach sour gummy rings that are quite soft for being stuck in a vending machine. Really good, but now it's time to head to the studio. I really can't stop the first bag, it's almost empty. It's so nice, the app where you watch ads and get a free tram ticket is working again. That's just awesome, 1 euro 60 saved. I think I know what's inside of here and I've been waiting so long for it and I'm just happy about it. This letter here is so weird. I'm getting billed for something that I ordered from Shenzhen. 200 euros for, for a miniature car out of plastic. Very weird. It's probably just a scam. That's just something for Vanessa. My duet is back. Send it out to Apogee. They told me they can fix it. And here's my little body back. And it's hopefully working. I've, I've missed the sound card a bit. I know it's dirty, it's very heavily used. But that's the one thing I made all of my tracks with. Now the big moment, will it actually turn on? Yes. Next question is, does it play any sound? Yes, perfect. Thanks a lot to Apogee for fixing the sound card. That's really amazing. I've never thought that it's even possible to repair it. Now, I just don't know what to do with the Focusrite Scarlet. I, I really like the sound card, but 
I don't really need two of them, so I think I will sell this one because this is actually still sellable. The duet, yeah, there is just no way someone would buy this. Now, for the rest of the day, I'm going back to the beginning of the end track with Katie. It's all done, all of the arrangement, all of the mixing. There are just like really small micro clips in her voice that I have to remove and also one little arrangement thing that doesn't sound really cool and one automation is still wrong and then just preparing it for the mastering. <laughs> The track is finally all done for mastering. I had one part that was a bit tricky in the vocals. There was like a clipping noise that was recorded into it and removing it with the pencil tool didn't really work. Usually I'm using it just to kind of redraw the waveform. That's something really handy you should know how to do. You just really zoom into the waveform in Logic and then you select the, the pencil tool and you can redraw whatever you want into here and it then corrects the waveform. This is of course total nonsense. This will sound horrible, I think. I never actually tried it. Lost. This just created a weird peak on the left channel, so let's undo this. In the case of this vocal file, the clipping was just too hard. There was no way to remove it with the pencil tool without being noticeable. So I searched right here in Logic's library for another vocal part of her where she was singing the verse without any clipping. Luckily I found one, I just replaced it and cut it at a point where the piano is hitting so that you can't hear the cut. If you listen to it without the piano, just a vocal solo, you definitely can hear that the cut is a little bit weird. But with the piano, you can't hear it. Sometimes when you produce music, you just have to apply some of these tricks, masking things with other things, hiding clicks, maybe the singer isn't singing all perfect and you have to pitch correct it a lot, then you usually put an effect sound on top to distract the listener from really listening to the pitch of the voice. And whenever you work a lot with samples or you try to make an edit, where you just have material that isn't perfect and isn't actually made for you to make a track out of it, you will have to do a lot of these small tricks and trying to hide the mistakes within the track so that at the end nobody will ever hear it and the listener can just enjoy the track as a whole. So now it's finally time to bounce out the track for pre-mastering. That's super easy. You just you just remove all of the plugins on your mastering chain. You press play at a spot in your track where it's just loud, probably just the chorus part. And then you just check the meter here. It says minus six dB and that's just perfect for mastering. All mastering engineers will require you to send them the files in 24-bit wave. You can also send it in 16-bit but 24 is better, they can play around with it a bit more. You also need to give them at least 4 dB of headroom. 3 might also still work, minus 6, minus 12, it's all fine. Just not having less than 3 or 4 dB of headroom. And never ever put a limiter at the end of your track. This will make it almost impossible for the mastering engineer to really work with the track because you reduce the dynamic range and he can't really control it because it's already all crushed. I'm so far all done with the track. I will probably master it tomorrow with the Isotope plugin when I have fresh ears right at the start of the day. Now for the rest of the day I will try out Dilby's approach. Just turn off my phone, turn off the internet, set a timer for four hours and just start working on new song ideas. This was a super, super, super bad idea. I uh, completely forgot that I'm invited to a birthday party tonight. Vanessa tried to call me a million times. She then even tried a trick trying to write me on iMessage because this is delivered right away to my computer. 
password since the internet was turned down. So yeah, I, I just have to really hurry up. Back at home we have only 10 minutes to eat. I hope Vanessa's cool with me being 30 minutes late. And am I late? Is it okay? You see, that's why she's the best girlfriend and she also loves snacks as much as me. Now there are only two more left. You want to Dinner is all done. I'm just still... We're now on our way to another birthday. I think that's like, I don't know, there are oh, like snow. a lot of... Yeah, cool. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> Distracting me again from vlogging. Uh -oh. You want to take over? Try vlogging? Oh, okay. You see? It's not easy. I was just wondering about how many birthdays there are when you're a couple. Everyone has friends, family, so these birthdays add up. Every week there's a birthday. Well, I think January and February is heavy. Then April again. And nine months after Carnival. Yeah. <laughs> but at least you always get something free to eat, to drink, and That's Vanessa it. is perfect in getting presents. She's kind of managing my private life. Funny little side story, Vanessa wasn't sure if she took her hat with her, and we had the great opportunity to just turn the camera around, just press the preview button and look if she had it already on when we left the home. So vlogging has big advantages as you can see. Yeah. At least one advantage. Yes, definitely. At least one. Now, maybe two, three hours of drinking, eating, and all of that fun birthday stuff. And probably early back home. We're. <laughs> I wanted to say we're Netflix addicted, but yes, tired. It's maybe the nicer way to say it. One more little snack. You want some? I've got some cider. 